Up next, my completed book nooks. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to another Innocent Modeler. In this video, what I'd like to do is to show you the completed book nooks now that I created as Christmas gifts. I made a total of three. Uh, one is for my daughter, one's for my son, and the other is for my son's fiance. Uh, each of these are smaller than the, uh, the book nook I made of Jack Skellington uh, back in October, and I purposely chose to do that because I wanted these to be a bit more compact and easily stored onto a shelf or displayed on a shelf. And uh, so each one has a different theme. And what I'd like to do here is to show you some um, work in progress pictures, uh, kind of give you a, a brief description of how I went about constructing them and tell you a little bit about each theme. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna begin now with these first two that are completed as I've started with recording this video here. I'm just about done with the third one. I'm just uh, about ready to do final assembly of that one. So I'll get to that one at the very end. All right, let's go ahead and begin. So the first book nook I'm going to show you here is one inspired by a movie called Spirited Away. It's an anime film, one of my daughter's favorites, and it's directed by a gentleman named Hayao Miyazaki. Now, uh, when I was trying to find uh, the scene I wanted to put into the book nook, you know, I started searching online about this particular film. It's been a while since I'd seen this movie. Um, and one scene that particularly came up quite consistently is this train scene. And the reason why is because it's exemplary of what this... Uh, particular director is known for doing. So um, let me kind of explain this, uh, take a second to explain this. So Roger Ebert in an interview was talking to the director and one of the things he pointed out was he enjoys how the director uh, puts in these little gratuitous motion scenes and what he meant by that is that occasionally you'll see the characters, the, the film focus for a second on a character's shoes and the way that they wiggle or how a character is just kind of staring out uh, out in the distance uh, uh, to the horizon. They seem like such insignificant moments and the director responded by saying that these are actually uh, described by a Japanese word called ma. It's essentially uh, the, that moment in time between action. And he feels that if you have a film filled with nothing but action, it's nothing but busyness. And a lot could be said about that, right? You've, you've definitely seen movies where there's nothing but go, go, go action. Um, and sometimes, you know, it can work. A lot of times it's just nothing but a bunch of craziness. But he feels that with these little moments, um, it gives the audience time to reflect and to kind of absorb what's going on so that the film can grow into wider dimensions. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about this, because you can, you can definitely go on and on about this, uh, I'll put a link or two below. It's something that as I was uh, you know, building out this book nook, it, it's made me want to go watch more of this director's uh, films. But uh, yeah, after learning more about his films and how he makes them and, and what's uh, what he, you know, the thought process that goes into them, it really makes me want to watch more of his movies. I'm definitely going to go do that. So uh, let's go ahead now and move into the build itself. Now, one of the things I wanted to do with this particular book nook was to make it smaller. This one only measures about six inches uh, long, six inches high, and three inches wide. Um, if you follow the Jack Skellington build, I use these wood plaques from Michaels. Uh, which really wasn't terrible to work with, but uh, for this particular one, and I actually had this plan for each of the other book nooks too, was I wanted to try styrene plastic because that's something I'm very used to working with. It's easy to score and to size. You know, I'm not the best woodworker and I don't have any power tools, so cutting straight edges was a bit of a challenge with that Jack Skellington book nook. And uh, sure enough, this was very easy to work with. Um, I ordered two millimeter styrene plastic from Amazon. The character seated here was found on cults3d.com and it's one that I had to modify. As you can see here, the character in the STO file is in a seated position, but his hands are grasping the ropes of a swing. I like the fact that he was seated, but I needed to have his hands on his lap, so I used a program called Mesh Mixer to slice free his arms so that I could reposition and reattach them using epoxy sculpt. The bench seat was found on Thingiverse and was designed as a seat for a boat model. The padding it was configured with was easily covered and smoothed over with epoxy sculpt to match the design of the seat seen in the movie. The train window that they're seated in front of had to be completely scratch built, and I used styrene sheets and rods to create it. I then used the painting technique that I learned with the Invisible Man build to mimic the look of wood grain. The hanging rings were created by slicing pieces from a styrene hollow rod, and clear plastic styrene was inserted for the windows. 
The backdrop of the clouds and ocean were hand painted. I tried various materials including canvas textured photo paper, flat styrene plastic, and actual canvas, and I thought the canvas turned out best. The floor was made using wooden coffee stirs that I stained and then applied a gloss coat to. To create the illusion of a long train car, I used the reflective plastic I had left over from my Battlestar Galactica launch tube, and I think the effect looks pretty good. And finally, to light the book nook, I used two chip size SMDs overhead and a combination of a warm white and cool white mega SMD to light the backdrop, and these are all powered with a coin size battery holder, all from evandesigns.com. And just a couple other things to make note of. One is I use a textured adhesive paper that I found at Michael's uh, instead of just trying to paint it because I figured the paint would just uh, could eventually chip off. And I think that worked really well because it kind of mimics the surface of a book. And obviously I left out the girl character for a couple of reasons. One, I couldn't find a 3D figure of the character. And uh, I felt this way too, um, that the... Uh, the character seated here is inviting you in to sit with him on this train and uh, hopefully that has a calming effect and also a reminder for you to take a moment to experience small. All right, let's go ahead and move on now to the Hobbit book nook. All right, well this next book nook now is inspired by Lord of the Rings and as I did my searches about book nooks early on this is one subject that consistently came up. It's a very popular topic and theme and uh, as I started to do more searches on this uh, subject uh, there's one particular book nook that I came across that I really like. Take a look at this one. This one is constructed by a guy named Sammy. He's got a YouTube channel under the name sammy Modelbau, which I believe means model construction or model builder. And uh, he specializes in tabletop dioramas, does some beautiful work. I really loved his layout, particularly this tree that he has placed here at the front of his book nook. Really nice touch there. I did experiment a little bit with this idea, but mine being a smaller scale, I just didn't think I could make it look quite right. And because I had some time constraints here, I really wanted to get this done before Christmas, I decided to leave it out. And of course, I want to take a second to thank Sammy for allowing me to share those screenshots. I did ask him about that, and he was kind enough to let me do that. If you'd like to see the bill in its entirety, the link is below. Now, the first thing I wanted to do was to find, of course, something that could 3D print for the front of the house. You can make the, the house front, because uh, as, you, as you search for Hobbit book notes, you can see a number of people do that. But uh, because of the scale I wanted to work with here, I was hoping that I could find one uh, that I could 3D print, and sure enough, there's always something on these 3D printing websites. So I found this file for the front of the house on Thingiverse by designer Rode, which also comes with this chimney. So now that I had the file for the front of the house, I needed to decide on the size of the book nook. And before printing that, I thought it would be helpful to set up a cardboard mock-up, and it certainly was. I'd highly recommend doing that if you're gonna build book nooks, because it really helps you decide uh, the size and scale of things and also your layout. So um, I decided in the end to, uh, after doing that, to increase everything by about an inch. So this went to eight inches, this went to seven, and this went to four. Now the material I was gonna make the book nook in was, as I mentioned before, going to be styrene plastic. But when I went back to order more styrene because I didn't order all of it at once, I wanted to see how the first one went, it was all on back order. So after kicking around a few ideas, I decided just to go back to the wood panels since I had some left over from the previous Jack Skellington project. I went back to Michael's and bought some more and these are inexpensive to buy. They come in various sizes and they are about uh, five millimeters in thickness. So the challenge here, because I don't have any power tools, was to create uh, or cut straight edges. And what I ended up doing was modifying and working a little bit more with designing a jig to help do that. This is a picture of it. And to cut the straight edges, I found that this was sufficient enough here. I had tried a larger saw. It was a little cumbersome to work with. This was a lot easier considering that these are smaller panels. And this is something that uh, fits on an X-Acto saw handle and it has 24 uh, teeth per inch. So the layout now called for the house to be nudged up against a corner. So I cut out a corner of some polystyrene foam. This is the stuff you find at Home Depot as insulation foam. This is great stuff to build up on. And um, after test fitting a few things, I decided that the size of the front of the house needed to be somewhere between 30 to 35 millimeters in height. So as you can see here, I set up the file now at various sizes on my print plate and I printed them in clear resin since I intended on lining the window. So this is how the prints came out. I actually still have the other two sizes here, the third one being in the book nook, of course, along with the, uh, with the chimney. Let me show you a close-up shot of this and you can see the detail is really nice down to the wood grain there on the door. Okay, let me go ahead and summarize now how the rest of the project went. 
To build a base the house would sit on, as stated earlier, I started with Fomilar, and the piece was cut out so that it would fit right up against the corner. And here's a picture of one of the tubes I used for the windows that uh, needed to be put into place to accommodate the wiring needed for the SMDs that would light them. Out of the foam, I carved out an area for the landing in front of the door and the steps leading up to it, and used epoxy sculpt to round out the roof and to add the texture for the landing and the steps. This is probably a step that most people do a little later, but I went ahead and sprinkled on the terrain mix that I used for the grass and added in the side vegetation and all of that just to kind of see how it all fit together. Once I was satisfied, I used epoxy sculpt putty to now form the rest of the terrain in front of the house. This includes the rock formations and the path leading up to the steps. I then painted the terrain with earth tones and browns, sprinkled on the rest of the grass and adding the vegetation, and painting the rocks with various shades of gray. The two trees standing next to the house were actually found at Michael's. And typically these types of things are expensive. You can find them in groups of six or more. But at Michael's you can find a package of two for four bucks. And they worked out great. Other details such as the birdhouse and bench were made from using matchsticks. And the big fallen tree trunk is from wooden debris I found at a train store way back when when I was building the Predator Pod build. I'm really happy about the background. I hand painted those onto the art panels and that was done with oils and I tried my best to blend it in with the terrain I created for the house. Now I did want to provide a special lighting effect here. I wanted to provide both a daytime and nighttime light. And uh, so what I've got going on here to do that, one SMD that's a warm white, it's a mega size SMD from Evan Designs, and the other one is a blue. And it's all hooked up into one switch. They now sell a three position switch. I can use this one switch to go back and forth between each effect. So this is the daytime effect here and you can switch then to a nighttime effect. And you notice that the windows light simultaneously with the blue. Now the camera is washing this out. It is a deeper blue in person, so it looks really nice here. And uh, this is all powered by a AAA battery enclosure that they recommended. And uh, I tried out the coin size battery first. It wasn't bright enough, so I was gonna go to a nine volt, but they suggested a AAA enclosure and it works perfectly. And to hook on the back panel here, I just have magnets installed so you can take it easily on and off and access your battery. So I suppose any of these book nooks here give the opportunity for the viewer to experience a little bit of a quiet moment. And in this case, you're looking into this enclosure. Imagine yourself at the Shire. All right, let's go ahead and move on now to the Batman book nook. All right, well, the uh, last book nook I have to show you here is based on the Dark Knight Returns graphic novel. And uh, I've always been wanting to do, for some time now, a book nook with a superhero theme. And this gave me the opportunity to do so because that's my son's favorite uh, graphic novel. It's uh, a definitive uh, moment for the character. If you're a Batman fan, I'm sure you'll agree. This is a beautifully done graphic novel by Frank Miller. If you're not familiar with it, I'd highly recommend checking it out. So I found a figure uh, on CG Trader, and this is the one I was initially going to use for this. It's a beautifully done sculpt, and uh, it's by a designer, Pascal Ackerman. And as you can see, along with the sculpt of the Batman figure is also the bat signal. Now, because it's fitting into a smaller enclosure, my concern was that the figure uh, and everything would have to be printed fairly small. My initial idea with using this particular figure was going to include some buildings in the background and so forth, but um, I, I was all set to do that when I presented this particular issue to Omar Baez, see what his opinion was, and he actually responded by saying he had even a better figure. So he had to contact the designer first because the files were sold in a limited um, run, and uh, the designer was kind enough to allow me to use the files for this particular project. So uh, this is what the sculpt, uh, a picture of the sculpt that he sent me, and as you can see it has a beautiful likeness to the character from the comic book and uh, really nice details to the suit. Everything includes a base. And what I'm gonna include here now is a link to his CG Trader page. You can also find him there on CG Trader under the name Temparo. And uh, he's got a number of other designs which currently are uh, on sale at a discounted fee, so check it out, at least on sale as of uh, taping this, um, or recording this, this video. So step one again here is to decide on the size of your book nook and Therefore, that's going to determine the size of the character as well. Um, since I wanted the character to be featured fairly, fairly prominently in this book nook, I wanted to expand the size. So what we've got going on here now is uh, 9 inches high, uh, 8 inches deep, and we've got a 4 inch width. 
All right, so a lot of fun stuff involved with this particular bill. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the summary. I started by just figuring out how wide a stand could be accommodated by the dimensions of our nook, which in the end determined a print that's about 22% of its full size. I moved on to painting the figure, which was pretty straightforward, using Wolf Gray by MSP Paints for the gray suit, and a mix of Game Color Magic Blue, Vallejo Prussian Blue, along with Deep Sky for the blue parts of his suit. Highlights and shadows were added throughout. I found applying a black wash to the entire figure was helpful with enhancing all of the surface details, especially at this smaller scale. Next was the funnest part of the build, which was designing the expanded terrain that would surround the one included with the figure. I glued on the stand first, then cut out formula, placing them at each corner, and mapped out where all of the extra debris I was going to add would be. I then used epoxy sculpt to create the lumpy terrain, and then painted it. The first thing I did was add base coat to the entire terrain, then added in the debris by embedding the pieces into the base by using wet epoxy sculpt. I actually kneaded in some of the base color into the epoxy sculpt, and by doing so made blending and painting easier. As I went along, I used an abrasive sponge to duplicate the texture of the printed base. Now I painted the base coat first before adding in the debris, simply because there were a lot of nooks and crannies to get into. Having the debris in place first would have made it a little bit more difficult. I continued to work at all of the weathering with washes and a brown rust color, and then dry brushing steel and silver here and there. I finished it off by dry brushing some oranges to all of the peaks for highlights that would be from the setting sun and sky. The surrounding background was next, and I was inspired by the animated movie which used oranges and browns for this scene. Before painting the sky, I mapped out where the terrain would be and masked off the tops with liquid mask. I at first planned on using acrylics, but found they weren't vibrant enough, so I turned to oil paints. The skyline you see here was created by making a stencil for the skyline using silhouettes that I found online. I googled city skyline silhouettes, found one to my liking, printed it on photo paper, and used an X-Acto knife to cut out the buildings resulting in a stencil. Very light coats of black were sprayed on with my airbrush, and it worked beautifully. The skyline idea was inspired by artwork I've seen through the years from the Batman animated series. The downside to oils, of course, is that they take a while to dry, so I tried my best to paint in thin layers. After two days, the sky dried, and then I painted in the terrain, which took yet another couple of days to dry. I really liked the way the colors turned out. Really nice and vibrant, and there's a good contrast between the oranges and browns to Batman's gray and blue suit. And here's a look at the completed project. As for the lighting, it's pretty simple. It's just lit with one mega size SMD, and I've got a push switch on the back here. Let me go ahead and light it up for you. And it does a really nice job um, lighting up the character there from above, and uh, gives us the opportunity to look at the dump and junkyard that I designed there as in addition to the base. And um, does a nice job really with bringing out the background that I was able to paint there for the book nook. All right, guys, well, that is a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed this review of each of these book nooks. I didn't want to make a separate video for each one. Uh, one of the reasons I just couldn't do that anyway was because I, I was on a time crunch here, and uh, to make the video and stop and, and edit everything, it's a little time consuming, uh, and so I just had to stay on track. So I thought a review of each of these builds in this way would be, uh, would be better for you to watch and hopefully this gave you some ideas on how to make a book nook for yourself. This is really a fun thing to do. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the things that allows you to do is to um, scratch build, you know, it gives you a chance to be uh, fairly creative in designing um, the enclosure and what you're gonna be putting inside the enclosure and so forth. So it really is a fun project to work on and when you give them away as gifts, it's something just very special because it's coming from you and it's something that you created and uh, you put a lot of work into. So um, I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas season and I want to wish you guys all the best this coming new year. I'm going to try and put together a hot off the bench segment for you guys uh, before the new year comes around. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. Uh, I'll be working on that very soon and get that up and running before the new year. All right. Thanks again for watching. If you have any specific questions about any of these, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching. Continue to enjoy your holiday season, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.